Shalom, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Gonna be getting started in just a second. Getting into this devil. Almost ready. Gonna get on this dude vocab Malone. <clears throat> Shalom, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> All right, so as y'all know. Well, as you may not know, <clears throat> the devil on the screen goes by the name Vocab Malone, right? And he thinks that he can single-handedly stop the Hebrew Israelites, which is a joke. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, getting right into it. All praise to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rakah Kodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. All right. And this lesson is going to be entitled... Vocab Malone, there are no preventative measures for the Hebrew Israelite awakening. Now, recently, this uh, this guy Vocab, let's go over here and look at it. <clears throat> he put a video up, and y'all bear with me here, as YouTube does what it does, right? This guy Vocab Malone put up a video entitled, There's a Million Hebrew Israelites, Church Not Ready, Okay. And he means that the, the Christian church is not ready. Here in the uh, description, doggone it, it says as follows. There's a million plus Hebrew Israelites and the church isn't ready for them. A seven minute video by Vocab Malone with current numbers, stats, and data on the movement. <laughs> so this dude, you know, as we knew, the Christian church is losing sleep over the Hebrew Israelite awakening. And it ain't even at the full yet. Okay, the numbers have been steadily growing for the Israelite brothers and sisters, but we're not even at the full. The Most High is going <clears> to <throat> cause more and more Israelites to awaken. And y'all forgive me, I'm starting, I'm getting started a little late <clears throat> this evening. I had a little bit different schedule now. But anyway, doesn't matter. We're going to go right into the scriptures because Vocab Malone, and, and all, it ain't just him. He's, he's the, uh, and y'all hold on here. He's a face. I don't know what happened here. <clears throat> anyway. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. Anyway, vocab is the face of apologetics. But there's a lot of other Christians behind the scenes. You know, a lot of um, I don't even know what you what, what you would call them gatekeepers and whatnot trying to stop the Israelites from waking up but you can't it's prophecy let's go here real quick and read from the scriptures this is what the Savior said this is Luke 24 and verse 44 <clears throat> now this is when and we can start up a little bit this is when the Savior was uh before he ascended to be with the Father he said right here as a matter of fact let's go to the book of Acts oh you know what we'll read from here first then we'll go to Acts Luke 24 and 44 and he said unto them these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So he told the disciples all things in the scriptures was going to be fulfilled. He mentioned specifically the law of Moses, his Old Testament, and in the prophets, Old Testament, and in the Psalms concerning me. Now, when you read in the, in the uh, prophets and in the Psalms, it talks about the Savior coming back, especially in the prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, particularly Ezekiel, had a prophecy of the dry bones. And we're going to go and read some of that. And the dry bones is the Israelites awakening from a long sleep or from a um, awakening from, from a uh, falling away. Now it goes on, it says, Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So even back then, the Savior had to open the minds of the disciples. To understand the scriptures fully. Just like today with us. He opens our minds. And that's when you wake up. 
when the when the Savior opens your mind up. Let's matter of fact, let's go to Isaiah 34. We'll go there real quick. And we're gonna play Vocab Malone's video. It's about seven minutes long. <clears throat> this is verse uh Isaiah 34 and 16. It says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So the book of the Lord is the Holy Bible. It says, No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. What should not fail? The prophecies. You have prophecies in the scriptures of the Savior coming back, right? In, Je in Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, or particularly in Isaiah and in Jeremiah, it talks about the Lord coming back, saving the Israelites from, the, from all places where they've been captive. Ezekiel prophesied of the dry bones. The Israelites waking up. It goes on. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth, it hath commanded in his spirit, it hath gathered them. So it says in the scriptures, the spirit of the Lord would do the gathering. Now let's go to the book of Acts. Because the Lord <clears throat> said it before he departed. That the disciples would go and be witnesses unto him. Let's just start at verse 1. Acts 1 verse 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Yahweh shall begin both to do and to teach. Until the day in which he was taken up. After that, through the Holy, Holy Spirit, Salakia, after that, he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. And if you remember, Yahweh was walking on the beach and he was, he was choosing men right then. Let's go there. Fishers of men. <clears throat> and this is exciting time. Anytime these Christians openly make videos showing that they're not ready for the Israelites, then you know, you know what time we in. So this is a... Uh, Real quick, this is Matthew 4.18. It says at the top, the first disciples. And Yahweh shall walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren called Simon, Peter, Salakia, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishers. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And, and we're coming like manner now. We are fishers of men. This is all the fish being caught. It's got Vocab Malone and Christianity afraid. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, and his ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. See? So as Yahweh Shah was walking, he was selecting chosen men. Now in these days, the same thing is happening again, but it's being done you know, by the preaching of the gospel. Now, going back to Acts 1 and 2, it says, Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. And, and this is, the gospel now is for the chosen again. It's for the elect. The gathering of, of the fish all around the earth. Right? Now, let's get real quick. I got to get another precept. So, like you, let's go to Matthew. Matthew 13 and 47. <clears throat> Matthew 13, 47, it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. Now, the sea represents peoples, multitudes, nations, tongues, kindreds, right? That's what the sea represents, the sea. All the waters which thou sawest. Let's get a precept on that. This is Revelation 17, 15. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, this is talking about Babylon the Great, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Now that was dealing with the great horse sitting upon many waters, but it's the same thing when you deal with, um, it ain't talking about Babylon the Great, but the kingdom of heaven. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. Now it's a parable, which it was talking about a literal sea there, but in the spirit, the sea is what? All the different nations, kindreds, and tongues. It says, and gathered of every kind. Why? Because the Israelites are scattered among all those nations. Which when it was full, they drew the shore and sat down and gathered the good in the vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world that angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. The Israelites are going to be gathered from all different nations. And if brothers don't mind, you can put up Acts, I'm sorry, Amos 9, and 8 through 10, the sifting, that's part of the sifting. The, the word is going to go throughout the 
throughout the earth. As a matter of fact, so lock it, bros. I'm going to have to grab it. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get it. I just grab, grab it myself. Amos 9 and 10. We just read verse 10. I'm sorry, verse 9. Verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord power are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, said the Lord. It's all about Jacob. The Most High is going to destroy. This time the sinful kingdom is America, Babylon the Great. And Jacob is there presently, but the Lord said he's not going to destroy utterly Jacob. He's going to save the elect from among them. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations. Like as corn is sifted in the seed, yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. So this word is, is going throughout the earth sifting. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. And that's what's happening right now. The Lord is sifting the Israelites among all nations. Okay, hold on real quick, brothers. All right, so a brother asked on the comment board, how can he get with the camp in Atlanta? You have to go on that go on their comment board. Go on the Atlanta Brothers comment board. Type in GMS Atlanta. Go to their page. Go on their comment board. Let them, you know, let them know you want to you want to um link up with them. Okay? Nah, you don't need to stop. You if, if you play stuff for exercises, no problem. You gotta have a pastime. He asked, and I play football and basketball for exercise. Do I need to stop? Nah, you hey, you got you got leisure time. As long as anything that don't interfere with the truth, you can still do it. Getting back to the scriptures. Matthew 13, 48. It says, back in 47, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down to gather the good in the vessels, but cast the bad away. See, so the, the good Israelites are going to be taken, you know, they're going to they're going to receive the truth. See, they're going to receive the truth. They're going to they're going to get into it. The bad. It's going to be cast away through the spirit. And then literally when the Lord comes, the, the elect is going to be gathered first in the spirit, as we read in Isaiah 34. And then when the Lord comes, he's going to save the elect. And this is what Volcan Malone is in fear of. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. Now, among the Israelites, you got wicked Israelites and you got just Israelites. Right. You got the bad and the good. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There should be welling and gnashing of teeth. So this is what's going to happen. But we got to, you know, we're working our way towards that. Right now, the gospel's being preached. And it's got these people all up in arms because they see the numbers growing. This dude even went, he went all into the numbers of how many Israelites, <laughs> how many, how many percentage of the ones that's woke, believe it or whatever. You'll see it. This dude is, is, a, is a nutcase. He's on the job, though. And it's all good. Now, it goes on in verse 3. Acts 1 and 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. And one of those infallible proofs, he said, uh, he asked them to put, his, put their hands in his side and look at the nail prints in his hands and in his feet. He showed them that. And he proved that he was alive by, by um, eating broiled fish and a honeycomb. I think that's in Luke 24. Which we already read, Luke 24, around about. Those were the infallible proof that the, that the Savior showed. He said here, and I just read it, um, Luke 24, 36. And as they spake, Yahweh Shah himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. He said, Shalom. And they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. This is an infallible proof. When you look up the word infallible, I think it means without fail. Right? If a brother want to look it up, you can look it up. All right? Um, it goes on. It says that when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, have ye here any meat? Uh-oh. Them two bug out said if you eat meat, you go into the lake of fire. Well, what the Savior eating meat right here. And they gave him a piece of, of broiled fish 
and oven honeycomb. And guess what? Fish do have blood, you demons, you dumb niggas. But you cook the fish, you cook the meat, and you pour out the blood. Two idiots. Two demons that demonized Moses. And he took it and did eat before them. So he showed them right there that he was, he was, he was him. He was uh, the savior. And he proved to them that he was alive by eating. Verse 4 says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says, He, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. And when they therefore will come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times all the seasons which the father had put in his own power. So he told him, just like the scriptures say, no, no man knows the day nor the hour. But, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. Where was the uttermost part of the earth? Where is that? From Jerusalem. It's all over here on this side of the world. Is where the gospel had to come to. It went all over the whole planet. But all the disciples passed away before that happened. John the Revelator was, was, as we know, one of those last men that was alive. And he died on the Isle of Patmos, we believe, because he was over 90 years old when he was banished to the salt mines as a punishment. So when did the disciples come and take the gospel to the, to the, the uh, utmost part of the earth? They're back now doing that. And this is what Vocab Malone is in fear of. Let's go to Revelation real quick. The disciples are back in the reincarnation <clears throat> and the holy prophets. Revelation 18 and 20, it says, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for the Most High hath avenged you on her. How in the hell, why in the hell, are the holy apostles and prophets being avenged on Babylon the Great and they never came to Babylon the Great? It's because they did come to Babylon the Great, but not in that lifetime. They're back now. Listen again, rejoice over her, thou heaven. Who is heaven? The kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. It's the Israelites. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. Who are the holy apostles and prophets? You know them very well. We just went through it. The Lord picked them by hand. And the prophets of old, they're back. For the most high had to avenge you on her. So he's going to avenge the prophets and the holy apostles and, and the Israelites own Babylon the great because why? Because we are his people. Now this devil vocab Malone and all these Christians, that, that's why you're seeing an increase of Christians coming to the camps, right? The Boston brothers just got finished cutting up another bug out, destroyed him. We had a Christian bug out come up to us the other day. And before he could even get started, we just we annihilated his ass and sent him on his way. So you're going to have other brothers you know, other camps and brothers constantly dealing with these punk ass Christians, but we know you ain't ready. Now you're gonna hear Vocab Malone say at the end of his video something about preventative measures. Let's just go ahead and read it now. Preventative measures means any reasonable measures taken by any person in response to a incident to an incident to prevent, minimize, or mitigate loss or damage or to affect environmental cleanup. So these devils want to they wanna prevent the awakening of the Hebrew Israelites, but they can't do it. You know why? Because it's prophecy. And the Most High said, all his prophecy is going to be fulfilled. If you look at the word preventative, you see it here. Here's the preventative measures tending or intended to prevent or hinder. See, that's what they want. They want to hinder our building or the Lord's building of his, uh, of his, spiritual, of his spiritual house. But they ain't going to be able to do it. Let's go real quick. The, the book of Ezra, is it? I think it's chapter four. Same game. And then we'll go ahead and play the video. Yeah, this is Ezra four and one. It says, now when the adversaries, as you look at the top, adversaries hinder the work. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, let us build with you. For we seek your, your God as ye do. Our queen edits. Chill out, please. You're welcome. Listen. It's all good. Okay? Boy, brother John Adams, you're just going to have to wait until they get back to you. If they don't get back to you, guess what? That, mean, that means something. So you're just going to have to be patient. Okay? 
You're just going to have to be patient. Verse 2, then they, then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, let us be with you, for we seek your God as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Asaradon, king of Assur, which brought us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God. Vocab alone, you punk ass Christians, you nations, you have nothing to do with us to build a house to our father. Because we're the temple, we're that temple that's being built. You punk ass Christians, whether you Negro Christians, you ain't got this. You ain't going to get this, okay? Only the elect. And, and some of the Christians may wake up and leave vocab alone. But, but all those people that's trying to stop this gospel, you ain't going to be able to stop this. There are no preventative measures for the truth, but we ourselves together will build until the Lord power of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, had commanded us. So when you tell these people straight up like our fathers did, they can't build. This is what they do. Then the people of the land weaken the hands of the children of Judah and trouble them in building. What else? And hire counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. And you see it now. See this flunky? He's hired to try to stop us from building, but he can't do shit. He's weak. He's powerless. All of Christianity is, is not going to be able to stop the Hebrews life from waking up. There's another one, too, in the Apocrypha. I got to figure out where it's at. Just give me a second here. Then we're going to get on to the video. Then precepts start rolling. You know, the fire got on me before I knew it. Uh, this pleased them. It's always like this. When Israel starts coming into their own, the nations get all messed up because they know it's about to be a beatdown coming up soon. Yeah, this is 1 Maccabees 5 and 1. Now, when the nations round about heard that the altar was built and the sanctuary renewed as before, it displeased them very much. Verse 2, wherefore they thought to destroy the generation of Jacob that was among them and whereupon they began to slay and destroy the people. So you see that same spirit now. These people are hurt through their shirt. They don't know what to do. They think they can stop this gospel. But there ain't nothing they can do, man. Nothing they can do. And they can't defeat the spirit of truth. This is John 14 and 16. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. That comforter is the Holy Spirit. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So we got the Holy Spirit in us, and you devils can't fight against it. You can try with all your might. You can't do nothing against this truth. So before we go and play this video from Vocab, let's go over here and open up this, get this comment board going so we can, uh, so we'll be able to see if I can get it to move here. Let's see here, brothers. Hold tight. <clears throat> Come on now. So the water to you brothers for being patient out there. We're going to get to this. Oh, you know what? There it is. All right. We're going to get to this. All right. <clears throat> Let's change this over to desktop so you can see the comment board. Right? Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, to that brother John Adams right there. Yeah, keep trying to, you can try again to contact the Atlanta brothers. I'm sure they see your comment. You got to go not on the live stream comment board. Go on the comment board of one of the videos after it's posted. And then tell the brothers that you, you know, because the way things work, you a new brother. So, you're you going to have to take some initiative, right? They ain't gonna, you don't just join, you don't just join Great Millstone, okay? You got to be brought in by the spirit. First, you let the brothers know you exist. And after that, then the spirit gonna deal, however it deals. But you just gonna have to, you know, we don't, we don't just meet people and then just, you know, let them join the camp. That ain't how it roll. We, we ain't looking for followers. We're looking for the real men of the Lord to teach the gospel. So if the most high permitted, then you'll come in. But if not, you may just have to study on the other side for a period of time. So this is uh, Barum Yahweh, 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. That's right. You people can't stop this truth. This is our Tazawan Bayath, Romans, I'm sorry, Revelation 11 and 3. I will give power unto my two witnesses, which the two witnesses are the two kingdoms of Israel, right? And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. See? So the two kingdoms are going to be prophesying. They're going to be bringing that word out. 
GMS Chicago sit downs, Acts 538. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. If this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of the most high, you cannot overthrow it. Lest happily, happily, ye be found even to fight against the most high. So you going you you Christians, everybody that, that try to fight against us, they find it out. You just fight against the Lord. And that's a futile battle because you cannot, you cannot defeat the most high. All right, you can't defeat the most high. You can't defeat the word of the Lord, neither can you defeat his servants. Anyway, let's get ready here to uh play this video. Let me get it queued up. Y'all brothers hold tight. I'll put my earphones in. And it's gonna be a, a commercial. So y'all bear with it. I'm gonna try to get past that commercial as quick as I can. All right, so this is Vocab Malone's video. Let's try to get it up here. When we think about the gospel of Jesus Christ, one great place to look at, one verse that encapsulates it. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Bad news. Everyone's a sinner. Good news. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Good news. When we talk about Hebrew Israelism, which is what we're going to be talking about today. <clears throat> the good news and the bad news are different. The bad news is something like this. There's a lot of nations, and they're all inferior to Israel. Israel is at the top ethnically, spiritually, physically, in every way at the top. That's how God set it up. So the bad news is for those other nations that are in some way on the bottom. It might mean eternal slavery. Some Hebrews like to teach that. It might just mean a second-class citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. It's going to be both. First, it's going to be slavery, and then you're going to be second-class citizens in the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is going to be on the earth. Now, he mentioned, right, that the Most High, and he's being sarcastic about it. The way he said, the way God set it up. That the Hebrew Israelites were above all nations. Well, we are. We are. It's right here in the scriptures. Let's read it. And this never changed. Deuteronomy 14 and 2. Salakia. Deuteronomy 14, verse 2. We start at verse, start at verse 1. It says, Ye are the children of the Lord your power, whose name is Yahweh. Ye should not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Why? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. And the Lord, Yahweh, hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the earth. Is that plain or is it not? Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. There you go. There's another one. You didn't go to the New Testament, brother. Well, let's go to it. This is 1 Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood an holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light there you go there you go now are the nations going to be uh, under us in the kingdom hell yeah let's read it now this is revelation 2 <clears throat> And 26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. What? Yeah, power over the nations. What you going to do with the power when you get it? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. How do we know that this is Israelites? We'll go to the precept. Psalms 2. And plus that scripture started out talking to, to, to the Israelites anyway. Psalms 2 and 8. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them 
Break who? The heathens. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. There you go. There you go. And it started out talking about why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing. You imagine in vanity. You can't get with this. You nations going into slavery. All of you. Jeremiah 30. Is it six? And I see your brothers killing on the comment board. Jeremiah 30, Salakia, and verse, where is it? <clears throat> 16, Salakia. It says, therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. I don't know how you get some nations going to be saved out of all going into captivity. I don't know how you get that. And let's, let's see what the brothers got on the comment board. Y'all killing it. Wrong, wrong video. Hold up. Oh, no, that's the right one. So like here. Let's go back here. This is it right here. Okay, man. Y'all brothers are doing it at the water. Now, the brother, uh, one of the, one of the uh, brothers from the Chicago camp said, told his brother John Adams, look at the background where they teach. Look at the landmarks, then go out there. Right. You know, or you may even uh, go on the comment board and just ask brothers, too, where they teach at. And you can go down there and watch in person and then let the brothers meet you and then let the spirit, you know, it'll do what it do. Man, great scriptures. Great scriptures, brothers. I'm going to have to just pick a few here and re read them and just get back to it. Because we'll be all night. So that's what that's the whole thing these people don't really understand. When you come against the truth, the most high gonna open up the floodgates and you devils. You ain't ready. We got the whole Bible that I just the New Testament because you think it's about you, but it's not. This is Gabar Dhamma, Joel 2 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your power, and none else, and my people, my people shall never be ashamed. I taught the one by Deuteronomy 26, 19, and to make thee high above all nations, which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor, and that and that thou mayest be in holy people unto the Lord thy power as he hath spoken. Boom. I will long a war, Deuteronomy 32 and 8. When the Lord, Salakia, when the Most High divided to the nation their inheritance, he separated the sons of Adam. He set the bounds of the people, Salakia. When he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Woo! He. Gabar Dhamma. Isaiah 40, 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as a, as a small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. You ain't got no inheritance with us. You can't build with us, you nations. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. I know it hurt, but there's nothing you can do. This is, uh, okay, the brother version down the straight gate, and we read that one already. Um, same brother version down the straight gate, Ecclesiasticus, 1717 for the division of the nations of the whole earth he said a ruler over every people but israel is the lord's portion mm, got him so let's go back to this devil's video and listen to more hear it again yeah we started from right here we'll, we'll go back a little bit an israelite so sometimes you'll hear people say it's well love brothers there's a lot of nations and they're all inferior to Israel. Israel is at the top ethnically, spiritually, physically, in every way at the top. That's how God set it up. It's true. We just read about 10 scriptures, maybe more. So the bad news is for those other nations that are in some way on the bottom. It might mean eternal slavery. Some Hebrews like to teach that. It might just mean a second-class citizenship in the kingdom of heaven. But the good news is you might be an Israelite. 
So, so not well, that's true. We got to preach the gospel the way the Lord set it up. But some of the nations that hear us preaching the gospel, they may be Israelites because Israel is scattered in all nations. I see the brothers got on the comment board. Let's go there and read a few. Israel is scattered into all nations. So the people that hear the gospel, we have to bring out what's in the book the way the Most High set it up. But all people that hear us preaching the gospel that look like other nations, they may not be from those nations. They may just uh, look like that according to the flesh. But in the spirit, they are Israelites. This is Gabar Dhamma, James 1 verse 1. James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting see so the gospel is to the 12 tribes scattered abroad and and it stands to reason and and it's true that while the israelites were among the nations they would look like those nations this is hebrew israelite milk baruch four and six ye were sold to the nations not for your destruction but because you moved the most high to wrath you were delivered unto the enemies see so we are all over every nation all over different nations that was part of our punishment in the curses. You read it. Deuteronomy 28, 64. Right? Let's go there. Part of the curses. See what these people don't really understand? They see it, but they don't get it. They think it came from just only studying. No, it's the spirit of the Lord is on us. We flew it with this book, and you can't do that because you're heathens. This is Deuteronomy 28, 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. Look at that comment board, Vocab Malone. Look at it, bitches. It's fluid. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. But guess what? We're starting to put those gods of the other nations down. That's what's got all these, these people in the uproar. They're afraid. But it's too damn late. We're moving on. We're going to the kingdom. And we're going to rule over you people. Let's get back to the video, brothers. I know I said I was going to read some. But we got to keep going and get through this devil video. And then we we'll, then we'll just over flood them. Here we go. As you hear people say, it's just an ethnic claim. Number one, the way they get there is not the traditional way people know their ethnicity. It's using scripture. That's right. That's how we're supposed to do it. Through the scriptures, through the spirit. And only one people can do that. Right? Hey, that's, that's good, Larry Burke. Larry Burke, at least you understand. And a lot of Israelites can't get that, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Larry Burke said, I'm one of those who look like Esau. But if you check my spirit, I'm 100 percent Jacob. Well, you know what? That may, may, may very well be. This is how you know. Isaiah 59 and 20. It says, Isaiah 59 and 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me. This is my covenant with them, said the Lord. So the most I had a covenant. The old covenant was, was with Israel. So was the new covenant. My spirit. See, oh, he's talking about the spirit. My spirit that is upon thee and my words, which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, said the Lord from henceforth and forever. What does it mean? It means the Israelites are going to always possess this truth. They're going to always possess this gospel. They're the ones that can preach it. They're the ones that's fluid with it. We know we're the Israelites. We don't need your, your nation's approval. We don't need your validation. We don't need nothing from you. We got what we need. And Larry Burke, if you got the spirit, you got the spirit, brother. You're an Israelite. Don't listen to the naysayers. Fuck them. We got this. The most high don't make mistakes. Where's that brother's scripture at? Virgin Island Straight Gate, he put it up. Romans 8:16. The spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are are the children of the most high that's right we're the children of the most high those that's got the spirit them people over there in israel now they ain't got the spirit of the most high bloody lamb eating demons doing oral circumcision with their damn mouth what what the hell is that got a whole nother book called a talmud you ain't the people of the lord stop playing number two they think it gets them somewhere theologically 
That's why it's not just an ethnic claim. Let's talk. That's right. It does get us with theology, theology wise. <laughs> That's why you're doing videos about us. That's why you're scared. That's why you're sweating through your kango, bitch. Because we all over you people. We on your necks. That's why you get your camera and your crew and you go from coast to coast looking for Israelites to, to debate against and lose every time. Even among the inferior Israelite groups, they still make a mockery of you Christians. Think about that. Let's get to some slides. Let's show the uh, first slide here just to get your attention. What's going on here? You have a gentleman from the ISUPK, and then you have a pastor. This is a pastor of what was once known as Shabbat Church, highest praise in Texas. What do you think's going on? Are they just shaking hands? You don't know the context of the picture. The pastor's giving him keys. The pastor turns over the keys to his church in this video, dated October 16, 2017, titled, Texas Pastor Hands Over Church to Commanding General Yohanna, ISUPK. You can watch it. Interestingly enough... Well, I tell you what, that ain't... That ain't such a bad thing, but at the same time, all he did was hand over his church from one 50C3 master to another one. ISUPK get the 501C3. They, we know they're hirelings, but you can't deny the fact that this truth is taking over everything, and these devils worried. On the sign of this church was Hosea 4.6, which talks about people dying for lack of vision and knowledge and all this, right? And at the end of the video, the pastor doesn't have a suit on. He has a black shirt, and he... Does the salutes and everything with the Hebrews are like guys. Literally. These devils so hurt. What's <laughs> you hurt? They see you know the, the pastor giving the, the keys of the church. He was more hurt by the fact that he ain't wearing that, that damn monkey suit no more. And at the, at the end of the day, if a brother out there got suits, if you wear suits, hey, that ain't the worst thing in the world, right? I myself don't wear them, but hey, if you do, you just do. That's just an outward garment. But at the end of the day, that represented that man leaving. That damn slave plantation Christianity and coming to the real truth. Since I've been to the truth, I had something like that happen. A lady had a cross on one day about seven, eight years ago. She took the cross off and threw it, in, in, threw it down. See, when you start hearing that gospel, they, hey, people turn away from, the, from that uh, false Christianity. They throw them idols down. That's what this truth does. He turns over his church. Sometimes it's not as dramatic. Sometimes it's more subtle. But it happens. So let's talk about it. Next slide. Actually, just skip the next one to go to the next one. When we talk about Hebrews of Lights, question is, how many are there? There are numbers for this, finally. For a long time, there has not been. But let me show you what the numbers are here. Next slide, please. 29, 20, um, 2019, there was a survey done. Over 1,000 people is a sample size, sponsored by the Philo Project was titled African American Attitude Source Israel. 95% confidence that sampling error doesn't exceed 3.6%. That's the error of margin. Next slide. You can find this out online. You, you can download the PDF of the results. In 2019, there are 46.8 million people who self-identify as black, making up roughly 14% of the country's population. This is very, very recent data. This is Pew Research Center, March 21. March 2021, 4%, 4% of the people surveyed said, I am a Hebrew Israelite, because they asked a question about Hebrew Israelites, which I'm going to show you the question here in a second. Now, what does that mean? That means that in the United States of America, 1,872,000 people self-identify as Hebrew Israelites. That's almost 2 million people. If you want to be conservative, you could say, let's a million and a half that's probably way more people than you thought. Does that mean that on a Saturday morning, there's a million people out on every street corner? No. That's why we might call this Hebrew Israelism, a set of ideas you adopt. You can be an Aryan believing Jesus was a created being like Jehovah's Witnesses without attending a local Jehovah's Witness fellowship. You see what I'm saying? You can believe in some things that Mormons believe without attending your local ward. You can believe Muhammad's a true prophet without being at the mosque. You're adopting some of the ideas of the religion. That's why it's Hebrew Israelism. Next slide. Let's break this down. Out of those surveyed, 62% said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not familiar with their teachings. 
This is actually a slide that I didn't create, except I created the little circles and the square. But all this is from their data, right? So 62% said, I don't know what that is. 9%, uh, I'm sorry, 9% uh, said, I disagree with most of the ideas. 6% said, I, I oppose them. I oppose those teachings. What that means is about 15% that are, are aware of it, th those who know it, 15% people disagree with the essence of it, right? But let's go to the next slide. How many agree? Those who are familiar, down here in the bottom two categories, remember I mentioned the 4% number, that's where you get a million eight. But look at this, I agree with most of the core ideas taught by Black Hebrews Lights, 19%. That means 23%, almost a quarter, 23% agree with the essence of Hebrew Israelism. That's what they're saying. So more people, once they hear about it, agree as opposed to disagree. That's right. That's important to understand. It means a few things. Next slide. There's very little inoculation. Because once you're aware, you're more likely to agree than disagree. So these devils doing numbers. 4% of 46.8 million equals 1,872,000 Hebrew Israelites. Showing you these devils are carnal. It's just like when Jake tried to count the 144,000 among the camps. They'll, you know, add up all the camps, how many brothers it is. You ain't going to be able to count. The most I don't operate like that. You ain't even got the right number of all the Israelites in the world, man, or even in America. You think you might know, but you don't know. You have no idea how many brothers in the truth. But that's the, that's the devil trying to limit, you know, trying to limit uh, our numbers by, or trying to limit the effectiveness of the gospel by mere numbers. Trying to count it, you know, trying to uh, put it into a carnal thing that they can control. You can't control this. It's too late. It's too late, devils. And, and the Most High ain't even woke up all the Israelites and he's going to wake up. That means there need to be some preventative measures taken. Now let's put some faces to these numbers. Let's go back. You hear what he said? You're more likely to agree than disagree. So that means there need to be some preventative measures taken. Now let's put some faces to these numbers. He said it need to be some preventative measures, but there are no preventative measures. Now, I put the link to this video in the comment section in the. Uh, I'll put it up again. Let's just go ahead and do that now. I put it up on the chat. So if brothers want to go there, if you haven't already went there and checked it out, or if in case somebody want to make videos on it, do so. Light them up. Bring out what the spirit give you to bring out on him. And, he, and, and when you go to this dude page, let's go to this page and show you something. He hurt. He got more projects he planning. <laughs> He's hurt. Look at this guy. Everything is about the Hebrew Israelites. He, he eat, sleep, and poop the Hebrew Israelites. Poor fella. Doggone it. Come on now. Let me re, redo it here. Try to get this guy videos. All right. Hold on here. So you go to his videos. He got 10 influential Hebrew Israelite groups. <laughs> Vocab admits I'm a Jesuit government agent in live stream. Salakia. That's an upcoming video. It's a premiere. He got another one, Destroying the Abuse of Deuteronomy 28 Forever. That's upcoming also. Doggone, I can't, I can't access this page like I want to. Y'all brothers, hold on here. I could actually take that dog on earphones out now. So this is that devil's devil's page, his videos. Destroying the abuse of Deuteronomy 28 forever. That's that's coming up. Answering Revelation 13 and 10, abuse once and for all. Like he understands the scriptures. He ain't on our level. Revelation 1, not about color of Christ, period. Hurt. Five wrong things every Hebrew Israelite teaches. Double hurt. 21 celebrities who promote Hebrew Israelism. Still hurt. He finished. He is finished in the video we just we just watched. This dude just got projects set up, and you can't get the truth. You can't get the, the, the uh, understanding of the Bible, and we know that, so we ain't even worried about it. You can do all the little 
And all we're going to do is make a, every video he put up, all we're going to do is make videos in response to those videos and bring out the true understanding. So it ain't going to matter. Whatever, do with it, whatever you think you can do, which is nothing. So, brothers, we're going to read a few scriptures and then we just go ahead and shut it down. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what that what that person said about freedom, whatever. Just stop coming. To, you know, if you got a problem with us, why you here? If I got a problem with somebody, I'm not going to go where they are. If they get on my nerves, I want I want to be away from them. I'm not going to go where they are and tell them I got a problem with them. It doesn't even make sense. You got issues with us? Don't come around us. We ain't going nowhere. We don't have a right to live. We don't have a right to do anything. You people are stupid. So prophetically, this was going to happen. The Most High said it. There are no preventative measures that can be taken. Because at the appointed time, the Israelites are supposed to wake up. This is Jeremiah 17 and 4. It says, and I got to refresh this thing. I'm getting all kinds of problems. Jeremiah 17 verse 4, talking to the Israelites. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. Now a Christian will say, why didn't you read the scriptures up top and below? Okay, well we did it in this verse, in this chapter, but... Anything we're going to read, make this, is it going to make this not mean what it says? We can start at verse 1. The deceitful heart, Jeremiah 17 and 1. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of their altar. What does it mean? That Judah naturally be going off. They hardened. They hardened. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. Now people are subject to worshiping idols. We've been there, but in the kingdom, we ain't going to do that because we're going to be perfect. O, mount, o my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So the scripture is telling you that the Israelites are going to discontinue from being the Israelites. What happened to them? They got cast into all nations, kicked out of the Holy Land as a decree by the Heavenly Father. And they have bywords. Names, different names and bywords placed upon them by both themselves and the nations. Black, Negro, Afro-American, African-American, Haitian, right? Uh, Jamaican, Barbadian, all these different names. Latinos, Native Americans, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. So it's decreed by the Heavenly Father. And now you're seeing us starting to come back to the knowledge of who we are. Let's also get Isaiah 60. Verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. What's the light? The, go the gospel. The light of the glorious gospel. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The glory of the Lord is on us. The Holy Spirit. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. So the, are the people darkened? Yeah, they darken. Is gross darkness all over the earth? Yeah, it's all over the earth. But the Lord, Yahweh, shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. His Holy Spirit is going to be able to be seen by the works that you do and even by your countenance. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and, the, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Which Gentiles is this? Israelite foreigners. Israelite foreigners. See it? As we read on, Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons, who? Thy sons shall come from afar and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. That's who these Gentiles are. Our sons and daughters. Then thou shalt see and flow together and thine heart shall, shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. What are these Gentiles? These are the Israelite foreigners of all nations. Isaiah 11 and 11. And they're being called by these other names. But they are in fact Israelites. Just like it was in Acts 2. Isaiah 11 and 11. Yeah, it started out talking about Yahweh Shai. In verse 11, the restored remnant. And it shall come to pass, verse 11, that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. It didn't say he might set his hand. He could. He said he shall. 
it shall come to pass that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Israelites from all over the earth. Now we need to go back to James 1 again, showing you that these people from all over these different lands are going to be Israelites. James 1 and 1, James is a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. When you go into this word scattering or scattered, and we always go through this because we always have to continuously do this when we deal with these Christians because they're, they're spiritually illiterate. Diaspora. Strong's G1290. Diaspora. Diaspora. Right. It says diaspora or diaspora or diaspora. A scattering, dispersion of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations. It says of the Christians scattered abroad among the Gentiles, which really the, the real Christians are Israelites. The disciples were first called Christians at Antioch, showing you that they really just put that in there. Down here it says dispersion, i.e. specially and concretely the converted Israelite resident in Gentile countries, which are scattered abroad. Those are the Gentiles. That's those Gentiles. Right from Isaiah 49, also from you know all the scriptures that we read. These are these different Israelites from these different nations, or these are Gentiles from all the different nations. And you can't you can't stop it. And, and every time you come around us, we're just gonna read you the same scriptures that you always get stuck on. We're just gonna pour that living water on you, man. That's all we're gonna do. Now in the book of Ezekiel, going back, let's try to you know bring this to a close. Ezekiel 37, it says the valley of dry bones or vision of the valley of dry bones, which was the Israelites. Right. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. What are these bones? These this is the congregation of the dead. Proverbs 21. The dead bodies are spiritually dead Israelites. We read it in Jeremiah 17 and 4. Proverbs 21, 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So you're likening to a dead body. And even the Savior spoke on this, that the dead. Matthew 8, 22, but Yahweh shall say unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Luke 9 and 6, Yahweh shall say unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of the most high. So you got these dead bodies, which is the spiritually dead Israelites. Back in Ezekiel 37, let's do it. Ezekiel 37 and 2. And caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. What's a dry, a dry bone? It's like a dry tree. No water, no living water. But the Savior put the spirit of truth out there. On the Israelites, and that's the living water. That's that's raising up this great army that you see today. That vocab had to go do the numbers and make a you know make a, a seminar and a slideshow. <laughs> Pathetic. Verse three, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, power thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That's another clue. How in the hell can skeletons hear the word of the Lord? Because it ain't talking about skeletons. It's talking about literal individuals that's likened unto dead, bone, dead bodies or dry bones. They're famished and dried up from a lack of food, which is the word, right? Milk, meat, and all these different things like that. And they also are, are, are um, dried up from thirst. No living water. Thus said the Lord power upon unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. You can go to Wisdom of Solomon 725. I believe it talks about the breath, which is uh, understanding and wisdom. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. I got to go ahead and do it. So lock here. Let's just go ahead and do it. Um, let's do it right here. 16, 11. We'll go to Wisdom of Solomon right now. Mm 
Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. And for all you bug outs, this does not mean that the Holy Spirit is a female, you idiots. Wisdom is not the Holy Spirit. Wisdom is wisdom. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. This is Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 24. It says, for wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passes and goes through all things by reason of her pureness, for she is the breath of the power of the Most High. And a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty, therefore can no undefiled thing fall into her. So that most most high gonna cause that wisdom to enter into these dry bones, that breath, and they're gonna live. Ezekiel 37 and 6, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. The breath represents understanding, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. That's what you hear right now. A great shaking over all the earth, bones coming together, waking up to the truth. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus said the Lord Power, Come from the four winds, O breath. What's the four winds? All over the earth. The gospel is being preached and it's coming from all over the earth. O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. This is what vocab and the Christians fear. That exceeding great army is awakening. Then said he unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off our parts. Let's go to Revelation now. Revelation 11, which brothers put it up earlier, but we can go and get it now. Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies. What dead bodies? The congregation of the dead, the dry bones. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. How do we know this is America, Babylon, the great? We're the proof. Look at the comment board. Dry bones, awakening. Or well, they're no longer dry bones, right? They're over flooded. But we in that great city. We were, uh, our dead bodies did lie in this great city, but now we, we awaken. Spiritual Sodom in Egypt, because it practices all the nasty things of Sodom. It's a place of captivity like unto Egypt. See? Verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves, meaning what? They didn't tell us who we were. They didn't tell us we was the Israelites. They didn't make us comfortable. You know, they didn't tell us to uh, help us with the awakening, tell us we was the Israelites, right? And end our dead state. They didn't do that. Let's just jump on down to verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them with Sodom. So here we go. We're awakened now, and great fear is falling upon all that's seeing us awaken. And it ain't just vocab Malone. He's the, he's the out front face, but behind the scenes, he has help. He got, they planning things to go to different camps. He got these little uh, different uh, so-called Negro Christians like K-Dub and these other guys. And they're they stupid. They're on a low level. They don't got the truth, and they, and they can't uh, fight the spirit of the Lord. So we're going to get a few scriptures quick here. Let's also get... Uh, I think we did enough on that. Let's go to Baruch chapter 4. This word is doing the gathering, showing you there are no preventative measures. Saying you're going to have preventative measures to stop the Hebrew Israelites is like saying you're going to stop the Most High's prophecies, and it just can't be done. This is Baruch 4 and 36. O Jerusalem, look about thee toward the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the Most High. Lo, thy sons come whom thou sendest away. They come gathered together from the east. To the west, by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of the Most High. There you go. You see it? So this is that mass awakening that's being prophesied. These devils believe they can stop. To utter out of your mouth some preventative measures to stop the Israelites. Hey, that's, that's ultimate pride. You think you can stop what the Lord is doing. Well, we dare you devils. Stop it then. If you could do it, you would have done it already. And you can't. You didn't do it because you can't do it. Baruch 5 and 5. Arise, O Jerusalem, and stand on high. Let's read it right here. Stand on high and look about toward the east 
And behold, thy children gather together from the west unto the east by the word of the Holy One. How? By the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the remembrance of the Most High. Didn't vocab say that we, we prove it through the scriptures? You know, paraphrasing what he said. Yeah, we prove it. We prove it scripturally who we are. That we're above you. We're better than you on every level. And it's only going to increase more and more and more as we go forward. See? As we go forward. This is Virgin Island Straight Gate. Isaiah 10 and 20. Shalom Obadiah Yahweh Kahan. Yahweh Kahan Salakia. This brother right here. We had words in the past, but it's all good. Water under the bridge, my brother. Isaiah 10 and 20. This shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. That's right. We ain't worried about you devils. We don't need your money. We don't want your chip. We don't want shit from you. We got what we need. We about to get up out of here in a little while. Lord willing. Verse 21. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. See, we're just looking for the remnant, the elect. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. And that consumption decree is the nuclear destruction of Babylon the Great. It has been decreed, and it is going to do what the Lord said it was going to do. It's going to... Uh, what did it say? The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. So we waiting for it. It's coming. And hey, that's going to be our ticket out of here, man. So keep on doing your little stuff over there in Ukraine. What you doing? Because Lord willing, World War III going to start up. We're going to be getting up out of here. Let's read also um, Isaiah 41, which really is a, is a great chapter. I'm going to start here. Um, whoo. Isaiah 41 and verse 8. But thou, Israel, are my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Now, we know Abraham had many seeds, but who was the chosen? Isaac was the chosen. And from Isaac, it went to Jacob. And from Jacob, you got the 12 tribes. See? Just for saying you a seed of, of Abraham, that don't matter. Abraham had many sons. Who was the chosen? Hold up, as unto, we know you Christians tricks. All you people of the earth, you're going to try your little different tricks, but they ain't going to work. Oh, man, come on. In Isaac, how about that? Thy seed. This is Romans 9 and 7. You know, we can actually read Genesis 21 and 12. And the Most High said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. Talking about Ishmael. And all that Sarah has said, said unto thee, and all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Romans 9 and 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Right. And then in, uh, in the Apocrypha, it says, let's see if we can let's see if we got it here. Um, I think it's is the second edge of chapter three. Let's see if it's three. Yeah. Second edge, chapter three, verse 13. Now, when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Abraham. Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou showest thy will, and made us an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldst never forsake his seed. Which seed? And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude. So it went from Abraham to Isaac, and not Ishmael, and from Isaac to Jacob and Esau, right? But then Esau was rejected and Jacob was chosen, which is where you got us at today. You devils nipping at our heels because you know that you're not chosen. Uh, 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 somebody came in the comment board and said, Vocab is mad because he knows he's not the chosen. And he is, and he's not. He's not the chosen, and he's mad. So is the whole world mad, but it's, it's, it's too bad. 
and wouldn't want to be you. See you and wouldn't want to be you. Isaiah 41, let's refresh this. Isaiah 41 and 8 again. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. See, Jacob was the chosen. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth whoo, and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with my right hand, with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord, Yahweh, thy power will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help thee. Saith the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. You didn't read it from the New Testament, brother. See, you always keep talking about Israel, but God loves everybody. Let's see. Luke 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord, power of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. What does redeem mean? Before we go there, I never read this in another translation. Let's see what it says. It says the same thing. Um, yep, yep, pretty much. Woo! CSB. Blessed is the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited and provided redemption for his people. <laughs> Woo! -hoo. Now, when you go into that word redeemed, let's go there real quick. Let's do it. He has visited and redeemed. Strong's G3085. Lutrosis. 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 Come on now. Act right. Lutrosis in the Greek. It says redemption, redeem, a ransoming, redemption, deliverance, especially from the penalty of sin. Ooh, whose sins we given? Israel's. Ransoming, redeem, redemption. All in your mouth. A redemption. Look, of the redemptive work of the anointed, bringing deliverance through his death from the guilt and power of sin for Israel. Not for everybody. Luke 1. Come on, thing. Act right. Look at how it's, how it's acting. Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord, power of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and had raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Why? To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. Why? To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Woo! -hoo. Killed them dead. Over with. See what the brothers got. Let's refresh this. These people ain't ready. And you would get more than that. And that's just a fraction of the scriptures we got. You don't want this, and you ain't ready for this, you devils out there in the world. Where is my, where's my comment board at? See that? There we go. Let's see. That's pretty much it, brothers. We done flooded them out. Great work. Thanks for the scriptures. All right. Thought to water all you brothers for hanging in there. I think we did enough. All right. So we're going to go ahead and shut it down. Yeah. We did enough. Let's go over here. So that's going to do it. We done blazed Vocab Malone. As the title of the video says, Vocab Malone, 
There are no preventative measures for the Hebrews like awakening. You can't stop this. You and all of Christianity put together. We know you can't do it by yourself. And hold tight here. Yeah, so I got the camera turned off. We in good shape. So we're going to go ahead and shut it down right there, brothers. The water, everybody, for joining in, for, you know, checking out the live stream and whatnot. Those that missed the beginning, go back and play it if you get time. Anyway, we'll see you again soon with another lesson, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.